Nearly all Australians, and in fact nearly everybody on earth, lives in urban environments. Since the Industrial Revolution, and now with the Technological Revolution, there's a trend for people to move away from rural areas into towns and cities. And so we're now interacting with animals and plants, etc., that live also in these environments. Uh, and, and we've produced this thing called an urban ecosystem. So in this video, I want to have a look at the human impacts on the plants and animals and the environment of an urban ecosystem. So we've got this, uh, in urban areas, we've got a high concentration of humans in a small area. Uh, because of our ability to be able to build buildings upwards, we've got this 3D stratification of an ecosystem. So we've got more and more people living on top of each other and a high concentration. Uh, we've got a trend in the suburbs as well of uh, blocks of land getting smaller and uh, more houses but also more apartments going further and further away from the city. And of course all of those people then need to uh, or usually use cars to, to move uh, across the city and uh, you know from the suburbs to the city etc. So all of these things have a big impact. One of the things that we can say about urban ecosystems is that humans uh, pollute it in three different areas. So we have different types of pollution. We can have a look at land pollution, air pollution, and then water pollution as well. So we're going to have a look at each of those in this video. And largely it's related to the fact that when we have all these people in such a small area, we've got a tremendous demand for energy, huge energy expenditure, and we also produce a massive amount of waste. Now that waste is human waste, so literally stuff down the toilet, um, packaging, so all of the stuff that we buy and take the packaging and discard it. Um, and then of course we've got a huge amount of food waste as well. So all of that's got to go somewhere. And this demand for energy and the production of waste has a negative impact on our urban ecosystems. So let's start in the city and we're going to look at, at a number of different processes and how they affect land, air and water pollution. So the city, we've got a whole heap of people that live 24 hours a day in the city. So we're using this massive amount of energy and one of the things that we produce in terms of waste is heat and light and of course noise pollution or noise waste. So we've got so there's always light and there's always heat being produced. So a city is a microclimate of increased temperature. It's actually hotter or warmer in a city than it is um, you know, in the rural area. So it's actually got increased temperature. Now as well as that we've got this artificial light 24 hours a day. Now this has a negative impact on the plants and trees that live in a city because um, plants use the length of the day and the amount of sunlight as a trigger for knowing what season of the year it is to flower. So if there's artificial light, uh, the plant always thinks that there's long days and it's always summer. So if they're a plant that flowers in summer, they're always flowering. If they're a plant that flowers in winter, they're never flowering. So that has a negative impact on them. Because of the warmer temperature, it tends to attract animals. It attracts uh, birds. Uh, because we've got all of this litter, we tend to attract animals that eat this litter. So, uh, so litter and food waste, food scraps. So we're thinking about the types of animals that are attracted to eat this food scraps. Um, rodents, things like rats and mice, uh, but also cockroaches and, and also getting back to the birds, things like um, crows and ibises. They're all attracted to the city because uh, it's warm and there's uh, loads of food available for them. Now, um, people need to move around the city, uh, getting to and from the city to the suburbs, etc., and they often do that on 
uh, on roads, using cars, buses, trucks, etc. So these uh, cars and, and, and vehicles that are combusting uh, fossil fuels are injecting into the atmosphere large amounts of pollution, of air pollution. And those pollutants are oxides of nitrogen and sulphur. Now when they're in the atmosphere they become an irritant so people who are sensitive to asthma uh, and, and, and other irritations get, get sore, runny eyes, they get asthma attacks and they get the sniffles etc. So it has a negative impact on the humans that live there. As well as that um, these oxides can react with the, the sunlight and cause photochemical smog, which you see in, in, in some cities in China and you see it in Los Angeles, for example. So there's, there, there's some parts of the world that tend to be more affected by these things, partly because of their topography, but largely because of uh, you know, the pollutants that are going into the atmosphere. So you see photochemical smog. In other parts of the world, you see acid rain. Now, the reason you get acid rain is because you've got oxides of nitrogen and sulphur in the atmosphere. So uh, when, when that reacts with the clouds, it produces nitric acid and sulfuric acid. So it actually decreases the pH of the rain. So when it rains, it actually rains acid. So, you know, we're talking about a weak acid, it might have a pH of five or six, but you know, that's enough to affect the soil. It affects the pH of the soil um, such that the plants in the forest areas can't grow or can't grow very well. Uh, and, and also it strips the paint from cars. It damages buildings that are made of limestone. So acid rain can be a big problem. So these are some of the air pollutions that occur. You could argue that this microclimate of increased temperature around the city is also air pollution as well. So out in the suburbs we've got our houses and our gardens that we're proud of but in these gardens we often are applying uh, herbicides or pesticides onto the gardens. We're also um, putting fertilizer onto our gardens and of course some of that is pesticides and fertilizers can run off into the stormwater drains would ultimately run down into the rivers and into the sea. So we're putting pesticides and fertilizers into the sea. It's not just from farms, but urban backyards where we're using pesticides and fertilizers will still run off into the ocean. As well as that, the, um, the, the powder that we use in the washing machine, so washing powder often contains nitrates and phosphates, particularly phosphates. So that washing powder, um, you know, if, that, if, if the, the runoff from the washing machine can then also run into uh, and find its way into waterways as well. And particularly that's a problem with phosphates. So we've increased the nutrients into the waterway and that concentrates such that we might have, um, you know, a waterway that has a high concentration of nitrogen and, and phosphorus and that causes a process called eutrophication. So we're going to do another video on eutrophication but basically what it means is that where we've got, so remember nitrogen is that, that, um, that main element that's required for plants to grow. So if it's a, if we increase the nitrogen, I mean that's why we have it in fertilizer, if we increase the nitrogen in a waterway, we're going to get increased production of the producers, the algae, um, and we'll have an algal bloom which will grow out of control in that waterway. But when that algae dies, it decomposes at the bottom uh, of the waterway by bacteria that need to take oxygen to, for respiration. They take oxygen out of the water to the point where we have a hypoxic area, a low oxygen area, and we've got a dead zone. So suddenly all of the fish start to be belly up. They die because of lack of oxygen. And that's a dead zone related to increased nitrogen. So we've got um, high, so we've got high density farming 
close to the cities. So we're going out a little bit, out past the suburbs, but we've got a high density farming there. So, you know, maybe our, um, our dairies and our, um, uh, maybe our piggeries and our chicken farms where they're, you know, they're factory produced. And, and so we've got a large population of, of livestock growing in a very small area. And of course, we've got this risk of runoff of, of waste. So, um, you know, your ammonia waste, so the, um, the, the fecal and urine waste, so animal waste products. As well as that, though, of course, there's a risk that the, um, the antibiotics and the pesticides that um, are fed to the, the animals to keep them healthy and get them to grow quickly, that can then also run off into our waterways. So antibiotics and pesticides, so again, our, our high density farming can have runoff into the waterways that, um, that can contribute to our eutrophication, etc., and it decreases the quality of the waterway and pollutes it. Uh, as well as that, we have our, uh, our processing plants, so um, you know, our abattoirs, etc. You know, they're not that far out from the city. Processing plants such as the abattoirs that process the, uh, that high density farming livestock. But we've also got, um, price, you know, the, the, the light industry as well um, that we see in the city because, you know, we, we need light industry close to the city where people live. So light industry, so manufacturing, uh, uh, you know, mechanical repair, etc. so repairing of cars, etc. All the while there's a risk of leaching or, or um, a runoff into the waterways of um, industrial waste and of heavy metal waste. Now, one of the issues with things like your pesticides and the antibiotics and heavy metals is that they tend to concentrate up the food chain. So they magnify up the food chain, and we call that biological magnification. And this is not uncommon in waterways, um, say in, uh, in, in the bay uh, at the, the mouth of the river where you've got a large amount of industry and urban and, and urbanization is that there's a tremendous amount of heavy metals in the ocean or in that bay. And so that tends to bioaccumulate as it goes up the food chain. So then when we harvest the, the large fish uh, and eat those, well, we're getting a large amount of uh, mercury and lead, etc., in our diet, which is tremendously damaging. It can cause birth defects, it can cause all sorts of uh, negative impacts. So that's biological magnification. Um, what do we do with our waste? Well, um, it, we bury it basically in landfill. Now, um, so often this is done in, in old mines, uh, old open cut mines, or it might be that they actually literally dig new holes. Uh, and, and it's not that far away from the cities, maybe 50 kilometers, maybe 100 kilometers. So the trucks take uh, tons and tons of this rubbish out every day. And then there's tractors that, that, uh, that push it into these holes and push it down, etc. But all of that waste, the food waste, etc., is going to break down. And uh, when it does, actually, it produces uh, gas. Uh, and it's, uh, it's probably a, like a methane gas. And in fact, uh, one of the things that they can do is they can actually funnel off this gas and burn it to make uh, energy. So that's actually probably a, a positive. Uh, that can be taken from this. But another thing that happens is that we produce this liquid waste that, le that leaches through the, um, through the ground into groundwater and into waterways. And we call that leachate. So it's a concentration of, of the heavy metals and the toxins and the pollutants in liquid form that um, leaches into groundwater and, and into waterways. And that's a real problem. Uh, when, we're, when we're looking at managing landfill. Of course, all of this industry and all of the, the people that live in and work in the cities, there's a huge demand for energy. So again, not too far away from the cities have we got our power stations. And we don't want them too far away 
because we've got to have people working there, but also we've got to run the power through into the city. Uh, and the further it has to travel, the more wasted energy there is. So we've got um, power stations in, in Australia. They're usually coal-fired power stations. So we've got carbon dioxide going up into the atmosphere as a greenhouse gas. We're taking carbon out of the ground and burning in the power station, so we're disrupting that carbon cycle. But as well as that, the whole process of a, of a carbon a coal-fired power station is it's, it's about boiling water and turning turbines. Now that um, water, that boiling water, then goes back into the waterway. So we've got this thermal pollution. So the water, that boiling water goes into the waterway and it affects the temperature of the waterway. And of course, that affects the abiotic factors, the abiotic conditions in that waterway. And so that's going to have a negative impact on what lives in that waterway. So that's just a snapshot of some of the issues associated with urban ecosystems.